Accountability and Anonymity, the social media conundrum. Originally published September 5th, 2024 by Paul O'Flaherty on pauloflaherty.com. Alternative title for this episode, Of Mouse and Man, The Courage of Being Anonymous. It's funny how this started. I recently posted an image to my Threads account of my purple Xbox controller and the mouse that I use calling them my weapons of choice for work and play. Innocently enough, someone asked me how my mouse, a Microsoft Surface mobile mouse, compares to the Microsoft Arc and I explained how the Arc didn't feel right in my hand. My reply led to them saying that I must have arthritis or something else wrong with my hand and then limiting the replies so that I couldn't respond to them. I'm not sure what to think of this or what to call this behavior. I find myself wondering just how insecure somebody must be to make a statement like that, which in itself is relatively benign, but then feel the need to make sure that I can't reply to them. I guess hearing that the product they like isn't universally adored is more than their tiny psyche can handle. Well, let me tell you something, buddy. I don't have arthritis or anything else wrong with my nearly 46-year-old hands. These ambidextrous wanking machines function absolutely perfectly. And that's one of the things I like about the Microsoft Mobile Mouse. It's perfect for ambidextrous people, good for lefties and righties. So no matter which hand you want to use while spanking the monkey, this mouse will perform. Now there's an endorsement. On a more serious note, this interaction got me thinking about how we give users the ability to control speech online while offering them anonymity. In this case, Threads gives users the ability to saunter anonymously onto another person's post, drop an insult or comment or some insane theory, then limit replies so the owner of the thread can't reply. This leaves the poster with only two options, hide the comment for everyone or block the user. Hardly ideal or conducive for rich discourse. It's 2024 and I find myself asking, should anyone be anonymous online anymore? And why do we give people the anonymity and the tools to be assholes online? I've been around since the beginning since before social media was even a thing. I watched the Arab Spring unfold, Occupy Wall Street, Occupy the attention of the world, the Me Too movement, and so many other cultural events organized, promoted, and propped up via social media. I've heard all of the arguments for anonymity on social media, from protecting minorities, to protecting the identities of people with abusive spouses and partners, to protecting people from governments interfering with their free speech and speaking to abuses of power and more. They're all really good, really compelling, really valid arguments. But are they really? I would argue that in 2024, anonymity on social media causes more harm than it does good. Let's not kid ourselves here. People's lives are so interconnected online that almost anyone with an hour to spare and half-decent Googling skills can track down and know almost everything about anyone. Don't believe me? Tell any married woman that you think her spouse might be cheating on her and see just how fast she digs up details of every account their spouse has ever interacted with, anonymous or not. Now imagine what a government can do with a court order. And a lot of times they don't even need that. A request from law enforcement will do to compel social media companies to hand over user data. We're not even talking about employing any effort. So while social media anonymity might present a veneer of security, it's really just that, a thin, flaky veneer. Scratch the top it all and it crumbles. Which brings me back to why allowing anonymity on social media causes more harm than good. When I wrote about forced anonymity online way back in March of 2011, I came to the conclusion that compelling everyone to operate under their real name would create a new kind of anonymity characterized by being hidden under the veil of social conformity. And that would be a bad thing. I was wrong. Social conformity is the thing that makes societies work. 
Yes, you have outliers. Yes, you have rebels. And they can push the system forward and make changes that make things better. But overall, society works because we all agree to laws, rules, modes of behavior, and other things that are acceptable to us as a collective. The collective citizenry must live, work, play, and thrive. And in the real world, in real society, anonymity, with few exceptions, is generally seen as unacceptable, as the antithesis of civilized behavior. It's cloak and dagger shit, and that never ends well. Today, the only people that are getting anything from anonymity online are the assholes. The racists, the homophobes, the trans haters, the bigots, the collective anal leakage of humanity. If you get my drift. They get a sense of empowerment because they grab that anonymity and hold it close to them like a Nazi flag security blanket. And that makes them feel enabled, entitled, and safe to spout their hate and vitriol. Worse, their collective feeling of empowerment trickles upwards, one of the few times they'll admit anything does, emboldening the Musks, Tates, Rowlings, and other hate mongers, which then creates an increasingly dangerous cycle as their fame encourages even more anonymous cretins. It's the perceived anonymity that platforms the circle jerk of hatred and grants it a veneer of legitimacy. And what foul acts hasn't social media encouraged or enabled? How many has it helped radicalize? How many has it bullied? How many has it killed? How many will it kill? Let's not kid ourselves here. The extremism, the hatred that is championed by X, Shitter, Truth Social, and others, and that leaks into every platform, isn't going away anytime soon. It's not a fad, it's not a bug, it's a feature of anonymity. And it will remain so as long as assholes can congregate, secure in their feeling that nobody knows who they are, under their pointy virtual KKK wizard hats. There's a reason your mother called you by your full name when you were in trouble. It made certain that you knew you were about to be held accountable for your behavior and you dreaded it. The announcement of your full name also served a double purpose of putting any siblings within earshot on notice that said behavior was unacceptable and would not be tolerated. The shock of being called out like that was usually worse from, than the punishment, as was the inevitable ribbing from your siblings. Maybe it's time to pull the hood off of social media users and call everyone by their full name. Hi, this is Paulo Flaherty, and I want to thank you for checking out my podcast. If you liked this episode, please share it with a friend. It's the best way to support what I do. Also, please consider subscribing and leaving a review on your podcast platform of choice. Thanks again for listening. As the antithesis... As the antithesis? How do I say that word? Is it antithesis or antithesis? <laughs>